Okay, so to find the um, integral of the absolute value of sine of x, remember we need to break this up. Find where the um, where sine of x, where is sine of x uh, positive, and where is it negative? Because we have to split up the integral there. So um, the first thing you do is you need to find all the zeros from uh, on your interval. So from negative pi over 3 to pi over 4, sine is equal to 0 at x equals to 0. So what that means is that I'm going to split up this integral into um, from negative pi over 3 to 0 and then from 0 to pi over 4. Then remember what you do is, um, and these are both going to be of sine of x, Okay, but whichever one of these on whichever one of these intervals uh, sine is negative, that one you're going to multiply by a negative. So uh, since sine is negative from negative pi over three to zero, you're going to put add a negative on the outside of that to make it positive, and then this one's going to be positive because it already is positive. Okay, so after we do that, then we can just find the um, the uh, integral like usual. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine and so times that negative is just going to be positive cosine of x evaluated from negative pi over 3 to 0 and then uh, minus cosine of x because the antiderivative is uh, negative cosine and then from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so then we plug it in. Uh, cosine of 0, that equals to 1, minus cosine of negative pi over 3, that's 1 half, so that's this first one, minus cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, minus uh, cosine of 0 is 1. So this is um, 1, and then plus 1 is 2, and then minus 1. So this is going to be 3 minus root 2 all over 2. And that's it. Okay, so this one at first glance looks incredibly confusing. I mean, how could you possibly find the antiderivative of a product with what we know so far? But there's a little, uh, little workaround here. Um, you can rewrite this as instead of e to the x times 5 to the x, you can rewrite this as 5e all to the x. I mean, this is exactly the same thing, right? And so then, but then you still have the problem that there's this 5 in here. So if this was just uh, e to the x, that would be fine. But 5, hmm. So then you go back to your trusty you know, guess and check method where you go, well, what if I just leave it alone? What if I just say that 5e to the x is the antiderivative? Well, notice that when you get the derivative of 5e all to the x, when you get the derivative, you would get 5e to the x, and then notice that, so here, this, you have to think of this as any other number. So this is just a number. So when you have an exponential function and you're getting the derivative, remember the derivative is itself multiplied by natural log of that base, which is 5e. Huh, that's interesting. So it's not correct, but but notice that this right here, this uh, this factor, that's just a constant, natural log of 5e. So then you go, hmm, what about if you say your antiderivative is 5e to the x divided by natural log of 5e? This would work perfectly because I would get rid of this extra factor right here. So. Um, 
go ahead and, and test that one out. I'll let you do it for fun. And uh, you'll see that it's that it's exactly correct. Find the derivative of this and you'll see that it's it's exactly this function. Okay, so then um, I'm going to uh, write this slightly differently. I'm going to have 1 over natural log of 5e. E. I'm going to just leave that outside. And then I'm going to plug in the top, so 5e e squared minus 5e e to the 0. And so then this is just equal to um, 25e e squared minus 1. So I just squared this and then minus 1 over a natural log of 5e. E. And that's it. OK, so we've seen a problem similar to this before. Um, it looks incredibly challenging, but, but there's a workaround here. Um, we don't have the quotient rule. So notice, you know, we don't have many techniques for finding uh, integrals yet. And so there's usually going to be a, uh, a workaround to finding the uh, antiderivative. And in this case, the workaround, remember, is to split this up into three little uh, fractions. And then once you do that, then you can... Um, you can simplify them. So here, for example, this one, the first one, square root of x over square root of x is just 1 minus 2x over root x. That's 2x to the 1 half. I'm going to leave them as uh, exponents. And then this one is going to be plus x to the negative 1 half, because I'm just going to bring this one upstairs. OK. So then, um, find the antiderivative, right? So the antiderivative of 1 is uh, x, and then minus antiderivative of x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves, and then times 2 thirds, but there's that 2 there already, so I'm going to do 4 thirds. And then plus x to the negative 1 half plus 2 is 1 half, and then times uh, 2. OK, so I'm going from 0 to 1. So this is equal to 1 minus 4 thirds plus 2. I just plugged in 1 into all these. And then minus 0, because all these are just x's. So that's, that's good. And so then just put everything into thirds. So this is 3 thirds minus 4 thirds is negative 1 third plus 6 thirds is 5 thirds. OK, so to find this integral, um, we have to figure out where this uh, function, x squared minus 1, is positive and negative. So um, let's find the zeros first. Now, this one is easy to find the zeros. This is at uh, plus and minus 1. You bring the 1 over, get the square root of both sides. And then since it's a quadratic, um, let's do a little number line because you know, we're not quite sure where it's positive and where it's negative. So um, if you plug in 0, uh, negative 2, and 2. So what we're doing is we're basically, you know, doing the same thing that you would do if you were solving um, the uh, quadratic inequality. x squared minus 1 is greater than 0. We're not really, but we're just... Um, trying to figure out where it's positive and negative. But remember, when it's a quadratic, this is what you do. You find the zeros, and then you do your number line, and you plug them in. So if I plug in 0 into um, x squared minus 1, I would get a negative number. And if you plug in 2, you would get positive. And if you get plug in negative 2, you would get positive. So basically what this says is that it's positive for values less than one, negative 1 and greater than 1. And then it's um, negative in between negative 1 and 1. So if you're going to break up the interval from 0 to 3, then let me, uh, let me show you right here. So it goes from 0 to 3. And so 
it's basically going to be from 0 to 1. That one's going to be, so you have x squared minus 1 dx. This one, since from 0 to 1 it's negative, we're going to make multiply that one by a negative. And then from 1 to 3 it's positive, so I'm just going to do from 1 to 3 of positive x squared minus 1 dx. And that's our setup. So it's really important that you get your setup uh, correctly from the beginning. Okay, so then we just do the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I have minus x cubed over 3, and then this is going to be plus x because of this negative here, evaluated from 0 to 1. And then uh, plus fundamental theorem again, x cubed over 3. Uh, minus x this time, evaluated from 1 to 3. And so then if I plug in um, 1, I would get negative 1 third plus 1, and then minus 0. So that's this first one right here. And um, Plus, if I plug in 3, 3 cubed is um, 27, sorry, over 3 is 9, uh, minus 3. And then, so that's just this first, that's plugging in 3. Okay, now here you have to be really careful with your signs. And then minus plug in 1, so minus 1 third minus one. Okay, so that, you know, got to be really careful right there. Okay, so we've got um, one minus one third, that's going to be uh, two thirds. And then we have nine minus three, that's going to be six. One third minus one. So one third minus one, that's negative two thirds times that negative, so this is going to be plus two-thirds. Okay, so two-thirds plus two-thirds is uh, four-thirds, and then plus six, if I turn that into thirds, it's going to be 18-thirds, so this is 22 over three. Ta-da, we're done.